We're delighted Kevin Sinner has agreed to be the third speaker in the Candle Bond series. Kevin has become a renowned artist of South Wales and he's brought renown to art from South Wales. Um, he's become famous. Famous for his wonderful, incessant production of marvellous art. And today, this evening, he will talk a little bit about why he paints, what he paints, what he's painting now, and I would describe it as his labour of love, the creation of his gallery, his studio in Oxford Street, Ponacama, <coughs> which is fantastic. If you haven't been there, if you haven't visited Kevin Sinnott's Oxford Street Gallery, you really are missing a treat. It can be organised by a phone call to Kevin and you, 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 you will be shown what is, I think, the greatest addition to buildings in South Wales for several years. A marvellous space to be congratulated on, Kevin. Kevin has also produced this book, which was published by Seren Books, a, a local publisher. And I was unfortunate enough a, a few years ago to write a review of it. And it will be on sale in Sust much more frequently up until Christmas and after at a wonderful <coughs> rate. What I think th this book does is show South William Vistas, Valley Vistas, in a, a totally new light, a revolutionary light. All of these places, many of them familiar, are drenched in, me in marvellous Mediterranean light. If he can see Pondicama, the Garo, and other places like that in such a way, I think he's teaching us something about how to look and how to perceive. But then an, art, an artist should do that. So, thank you very much for coming to Sustainable Wales, Kevin. A uh, dear and really looking forward to your talk. Thank you. I had no great public speaker, I need pure reality and relaxation. Um, this is the stuff. Oh, I just pressed the space bar. Yeah? Right, this is very early, 73. I haven't gone before this, but <coughs> what went on before that was important too. But it was just I was a different kind of artist. I've had a few, I've had about three major revolutions in my, my style. And this was the first one. Before that, it's not good talking about things that are in front of us, but I, I was a kind of process artist. Well, I wouldn't have called myself a, a conceptual artist, but I, 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 I dealt with media and process a bit like Warhol would, was doing in New York at the time. And I, I used to build objects. And while I, was, I, while I was doing quick just information drawings, nothing else, of these objects, I discovered that I, what I really wanted to do is simple, direct drawings of things that were in front of me, not being terribly editorial or not being terribly um, um, uh, uh, struggling with the composition, just simply, and this, I don't think these things exist anymore, it's a wall tin opener that we had in our kitchen in <laughs> North London. I must have been doing some from decorating, because that's a scraper in a tin, and I might have been even repairing a bike, because it's a three-in-one oil can. But that's the kind of non-editorial, uh, what was in front of me, and a simple, direct drawing. This is, this, is, this is on canvas. It was a summer break from college, and um, it was a very rough piece of canvas, and the paint I used was, was, was left over from some decorating I was doing, but I was so... I still have this painting. You might have seen this in Studio 18, actually, in one of my retrospectives. <coughs> this is a painting that's very dear to me. Uh, but I felt, even though it looks very simple, and you might think I'm, 
I'm, I'm reading stuff into what, what just isn't there. I, I, I did feel, uh, the earth move, <laughs> I did feel that, that this was this simple way to, of expressing and doing art was, was, was sort of pointing in a direction, which indeed it, it was. And I went back then to my third year in the postgraduate in the Royal College. And, I, and my last year, in the th th I mean, it's a great extravagance to have a three-year postgraduate <coughs> in, in, in London, but, but I actually needed that third year because I completely changed. And for, for the last uh, few terms of that third year, I, 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 I would just, I would, um, I, would, I would express this, I would take this journey a bit further where, where I would just paint what is in front of me in a very d direct, obvious way. Not obviously, but a direct way, so that there wasn't there wasn't any labouring to get uh, um, illusion or, or perspective. I would just sort of, the, the this this one, the previous one wasn't a very big canvas. The, the, this was quite large, and, and the space in which we worked in wasn't terribly big. So it wasn't if you could go back a long way from your canvas. So you're kind of working across the surface of the canvas, looking at the object you were painting, which is the donkey, and you're working and. So you were all you were constantly aware of the surface. So this is why they're all quite flat, which I wanted that flatness. This was something. I, this was a drawing I did at home. Again, uh, an example of, of not so, uh, of not sort of positioning a still life or something. Uh, it was a, a, a sh sh shelf that I built in the uh, we had a house a, a masonette at the time, and um, there's a tube of Smarties and the kids. Was, uh, Susan's purse on top of the books and the door keys and there happened to be a wedding photograph in front of the books. This just it's another one that's so dear to me. Lucy might from well, your daughter pinched that when she took it back to London and put it for a car. <laughs> but I, I, will get it. I will get it back. That's the last bike, bike that I used to ride into Kensington. On, in, um, yeah, that was in Studio 18. I don't know if anybody saw that. They're very early pictures, you can see, but they're still around these pictures, and, they, and I, tend, I tend to look after... Somebody came in today, I've got some very early stuff, I'm trying to arrange a retrospective at the moment. I'm taking a long time to hang it, because it's, it's a big space, this Studio 18, so I, I've got the luxury of gradually sort of hanging things in a, in a peculiar way. Or, um, I'm having a big exhibition on the 3rd of December, as well, for Sunday, it's, 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 it's the... Uh, the, the day before my birthday, and it'll it'll be on for about two months. And I've just heard from the museum that they are they are, are allowing running away with it from the with it, from the hairdresser. They they're releasing it, so that will be in Ponty Camera with, with my retrospective. So, but on on the way, they they they're going to t take it to one or two schools, and I've got to I've got to be there to talk to the kids. It's another big painting. So, how the earth they're going to be moving it into now? Because, uh, Kevin, I, I didn't say that we're celebrating your 70th birthday. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Very soon. Very soon. People <laughs> say, oh, you don't look your age. I don't, what, what do you mean? I look 80, do I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, th th this was, again, that, uh, this is extraordinary. The people used to be so lax about health and safety in those days. My studio was up a flight of stairs in the Royal College. It's on Exhibition Road. And, uh, so I, had to, I, had, I always had to work with something that was in front of me. I don't know, I, I imagine things. But, so I had to push petrol in the... In the in, I, I pushed it up these wide stairs. It was, a, it was an annex of the Victoria and Albert Museum, so very grand. And I pushed it into my workspace. The, the porters just looked the other way, they weren't interested. <laughs> what I did. And so, so this big motorbike is there. I'm, I've got a big canvas on an easel. And the motorbike is there, and I'm working across this canvas without getting back. It's, it's, a, it's, it's the wrong way to paint, but it just makes you so close to the surface that the lines sort of travel along this. Anyway, I was very pleased with that painting. So, I, of all, all the stuff you're as pleased, I'm pleased with, otherwise, I wouldn't. Because uh, the way I work is very hit and miss. There's lots of works, lots of paintings that I'm not pleased with, you know. I'm, but I, I'm not going to show you any of those. Most of those are in, <laughs> most of those are in North of Landfill at the moment. <laughs> um, this is Sue. This is um, I think that was my kind of carving lager on the fireplace. Um, 
Yeah, there's a, there's a, I don't know if you, if you can tell from the simple line drawing, but that's a posh leather chair up front. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the painting not long after arriving in the Royal College. I don't know how that happened really. The, Carol Waite used to be the professor, used to, get, used to help the, the, the first years of people, particularly first years that had come in from the country, so to speak, and living in London. They used to get ambassadors and people like that to, to come in and look around, um, uh, uh, to look at paintings. And, uh, Anyway, we, we took ourselves off to John Lewis and bought a leather chair. So we're in this kind of funny, funny times. I, I really feel now for students, particularly students of art, because there's no job at the end of it, in art college, having to live off loans. Or, or I mean, the, the, the DES, the Department of Education and Science, by the time I got to, uh, by the time I got to um, postgraduate, used to pay for grants and and because uh, you didn't pay tuition fees. And then Carway was bringing these people in to sell paintings as well. It didn't continue like that, but the first year in, in the Royal College, I, I just can't believe now what they expect people to do um, to survive and how they... And then they, they're very often the quality of the teaching isn't worth the amount of money that... This, this is getting towards the end of this period now. Where I'm starting to get of, of simply looking and paint and drawing in as direct and uncomplicated a fashion as possible. That's uh, Matthew must have come into the Royal College with me one day. That's him on the side there. This is Kenneth Clark. You must or uh, famous for being the, the director of the National Gallery for a long time, but also more famous for having for his famous TV series, The Civilization. So I mean, this was. Um, I suppose I've always had that notion in me that um, to mess about this sim symbolic uh, imagery or... So he's not real, he wasn't there, so I painted him as if it was his face as if it was newsprint. And I put the most popular newspaper of the day underneath one of the eaves was in the studio. This was in the studio. Oh, that's the, the thing I did. I, I, I wanted to... I, I changed my point of, of, of direction, of... Observation. So there's a division going through the, because so, it's a big studio. It wasn't all only my space. So that that was a kind of um, a sophistication and a departure from the sort of simplicity that I wanted to maintain. <coughs> but I've left left college now. I'm going to race on a bit. Um, and uh, I'm still drawn from observation, but I'm starting to think about the tradition, uh, the modernist. To traditions of all over flat work, and uh, I didn't, I wasn't aware of it at the time. But Patrick Heron in Cornwall, uh, in the fifties, uh, I, I created this style called transparent form, where he would draw on top of drawings, uh, ignoring the the, the, the the initial layer, and, and thereby sort of emphasising the surface and not the and not the um, the solidity of the, of the of the forms. It's quite interesting, and well, I did that. Um, the, the, these are at home. And so I've left college, I haven't got a studio. I, I'm working in a, a pen factory in Barnard. And, uh, and Sue is an auxiliary nurse. And, but and this, is, this is a, a, a hectic day. This is a painting I, that's, in, that's in Studio 18 at the moment. This is going to be a part of my December the 3rd retrospective. This was a, ma a major painting, and I don't know why really, but th that transparent form is going on. Big canvases. Uh, Matthew is playing in the studio. Oh, I, I had a studio by this stage in Stepney Green. So I'm travelling down to Stepney Green, and when Sue is, uh, has got a shift nursing, uh, I'm looking after Matthew as well. So I'm travelling down to Stepney Green. Matthew is playing around the studio, and I'm doing this, this, this technique I've got of of simply drawing as quickly as I can in large uh, gestural strokes across the canvas and then repeating it. And then it seems that from a very simple idea I had way back with that wall of tin opener, it had got rather complicated. But the, the, it's always, the thing is with, with art, and I don't know if it is with poetry, but the, 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 the main point is the aesthetic, is the result, the aesthetic result. You know, you can make art about anything, literally anything, but you've still got to judge the result. 
I, I, and I was be, I, I thought I was sort of doing something here with these all over paintings on the, these large canvases. Um, because the other thing was that while I was in the Royal College, there was a group of us that that did tend to. Um, this is another one of the. This is lovely. lovely I like this painting. Um, there was a group of us because the the seventies. We're getting into seventy four, seventy five now. Pop art has all taken place in the sixties, and and the sort of um, the sort of the, the sort of anti art, uh, I I call it. Even though I was a little bit of a pop artist, but but the, the sort of um, this postmodernism, I suppose, the modernism of the sort of abstract expressionism and, and, and the New York school or the European schools had, had been sort of turned over for uh, uh, irony. And, uh, uh, and, but they, there was a small group of us that were sort of trying to, trying to retrace the steps of 20th century modernism before the sort of, before, before the overthrow, or before the, the uh, ironic. Uh, so, so in New York, for instance, you had these heroic painters like Rothko and Pollock and and uh, Clifford Stills and all these people, and all of a sudden they they were being sort of uh, passed over by this, the, the the whimsy of of um, Lichtenstein or Warhol, and so there's this kind of ironic sort of uh, uh, anti seriousness. Uh, but there was a small group of us that, 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 that went back to sort of Russian suprematism and uh, Matisse and Picasso, and I wanted to 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 sort of uh, pay homage to 20th century modernism <coughs> pre. Um, uh, pre war hall and pop art. So, I mean, we're all a bit, a bit like that when you're young, you sort of take on things and you think everything is, you think that things are more important than what they might actually be. So, I, I'm up in London, I'm doing this stuff, and, and I'm still a Welshman, and so this is a kind of, uh, quite enjoy this picture. This, this, this isn't my, I, I, I don't know where this is actually. It's somebody, either somebody bought it or I swapped with someone. But I've still, I've still got a good reproduction. So. Um, somebody asked to show this to somebody, and somebody said, I, I, "I don't know where where the swan matches came in, or why I thought of this is called Rosette." I don't know where, why I put swan. I think it's okay. Yes, yeah. no, no, it's, it's it's a regular. And somebody said, um, "Is it Manic Street Preachers or?" Stereophonic said something about only one match. It only takes one match to write. Stereophonic, okay. Yeah. But that was nothing to do with our baby. Anyway, you if you sort of um, if your ambiguity is wide enough, you can make any kind of association. Yeah. Nah, this is a bad slide. That, that blackness shouldn't be in it. But this is an important picture. This is. But I'm a postman, right? I, I've been a postman for most of those paintings. Because when I left college, I didn't. Uh, I had notions that I didn't want. That I was going to. I don't know. I had kids, lad, a family to look after in London, but I still had these notions that I was going to be an artist. So I, well, the important thing was to get a studio and to get a job that allowed me afternoons uh, to paint. Now a guy, I, I, and I'm in touch with him now on Facebook, called Richard Miller. He told me he was a year beneath me in the Royal College. And, um, and I was, I'd, I'd left, but I still used to keep in touch with Richard. This was 74. And he said, uh, you know what would be a good idea, Kevin, would be to get a job as a postman. You can, you know, writers do this kind of thing, and give you your afternoons. You have to sort of be disciplined enough to get up at half past four in the morning, six mornings a week. But once you've, once you've got that, you know. Um, so anyway, he goes off and gets a job in Arundel, which is a public school with a very good art department, and I end up being postman. So, uh, and something like five years later, um, no, no, not no, 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 five years later, last year I had a show in, in, uh, in Porth, in the Ronda, of my post office drawings. Uh, it's, it's my favourite show still, that, um, that I put up because I kept everything and Susan used to um, look after the, the, the drawing books. And so they're all framed, 26 drawings, and, and I, I, I put it up on Facebook anyway, and Richard Miller got back in touch with me, and this is a long time ago, is it half a century, it's not far off it, and he gets in touch with me to remind me that it is his idea. <laughs> <laughs> and he spent his life teaching, and I'm going, na, 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 na. No, his life teaching. <laughs> it is fascinating, actually, Richard, because I, I still love the guy, but, um, yeah. He's now he's, 
He's, he's retired, because we've all reached that age where he's retired, and he wants to start painting again. But then, yeah, he's, that's fascinating. <laughs> so I, I don't know who was the smart one, really. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, now I'll go back to that a little bit, sorry. Um, how do I go back? Just the back key. The oh, arrow. The arrow. Uh, the, 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 the arrow. Um, did he? Ah, right. Um, this, this isn't, this is not a clever, well, it's called Breakfast with Prometheus. Because I used to do these drawings. This is when I stopped drawing simply from observation, actually. And I started, and I would do drawings on a layout pad. Um, before I went down to the studio, and I would draw very, I would, I, I discovered that I could just draw things from my imagination, just wouldn't have to think about it, wouldn't have to be, it just come out. Uh, but you still had the sort of my signatures of overlapping of spaces, of objects and things. And I, I, I wasn't aware of Easter Island, but I had, I put this, well, I must have been. Because sometimes your awareness only needs to be the setting in your subconscious to, to, feed, to be able to feed off it. But I put this, this, this figure, this head, and I just thought it meant something. You had the banality and the ordinariness of breakfast objects, like bottom milk and newspaper. And, the, and then you had the grandeur of, of the, of, of the, the, of the godlike simplicity of this head. So I, I, I had a friend of mine in the studio where I, I, I moved to Clerkenwell now. I had this friend of mine who had a classical dictionary. Now, and I was flicking through the classical dictionary and I discovered Prometheus. Now, nothing about the fire necessarily, but how he, how he related to, the, to, to, to mortals and he taught them various things. So I thought, ah, we'll have, I'll have breakfast with Prometheus. Yeah. So that's, the, that's the, the nature of the, the, the title. So off it goes now, this painting. After about two years, and it wins me quite a significant prize in the, the John Moore's uh, competition, which is once every two years. And, and it was, and I think it's still quite significant, but then it was about the only major open competition. So I'm still a postman, right? And I get this thing. And it's great for copy for newspapers, you know? Postman. So I mean, okay, I'm so poor. I that. <laughs> so, um, so Bill Fever and stuff. And then, so I get reviewed in the Observer. And I love this title, and Patrick Caulfield, who's a famous artist at the time, was on the the, the jury at, at Liverpool, in Liverpool, and, and he chose it. Nobody else knew me. I wasn't as if I was. I hadn't moved in in advantageous circles, even though I'd been to the Royal College. I was sort of isolated, and then all of a sudden, this break. Sometimes these breaks happen, and. Um, I tell you what, when you do have a break, though, uh, is that the, and, and I had a review in the Times and I had a review in the Observer. I tell you what, next week I didn't have any reviews. I felt like <laughs> down in the dumps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, that, that's breakfast with Prometheus. So I still keep that and I still draw that, even though it's very simple when I get it out and people don't quite know what it's about. It's got. Uh, I, 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 it's got sentimental meaning, which isn't really about the result, but that I was talking about. It's not. It ceased to be that now, and I think I've got to sort of move on sometimes. But the, this, the, these, um, this show that I'm putting together at the moment, people say, "Well, how the hell have you kept these paintings for this long?" But I never would have. I mean, I, there are lots of stuff in in uh, landfill, but. Uh, but there's certain paintings. <laughs> but there is there is certain. But, uh, that, that, that's what I was doing. That's why. I, that's why I became a postman. Because I, you know, there was, I always had a seriousness about the um, the um, the occupation. It wasn't just a hobby. It wasn't just a nice thing to do. So the idea of not keeping them, the, the idea of people being uh, impressed with how I've kept paintings from the seventies, I, I I'm a bit. Um, non plus at that. This is a painting that's lost. Uh, I love this painting, but and it's 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 a it's a painting that you can um, invite you in, I suppose. Notice the uh, the telephone. <laughs> Seems like another age, isn't it? This was painted in about the well, seventy eight according to that. And that's Gavin, that's our, our second son in with Sue Holding. Yeah. It, it's lost. I we moved houses so much. I think somebody is, took it, but uh, every now and again I put a notice up. If anybody can find this or knows where it is, uh, they, they'll be rewarded. Or, or I, or I, or I reward them.
that I, I, this is uh, called Lady My Desire. I was reading medieval um, love poems at the time, and um, so I pinched a few titles from that uh, different art form. So then they're starting to get what's happening here now. I know what's happening, really. Um, I could talk about the technique that I was using from right away from leaving the Royal College right up to now. Is a kind of uh, wishy-washy technique that used dry pigment and, and dry pastels and egg tempera. Um, it's a very unconventional method of working. Um, and I, I use it right the way through all those transparent foam paintings. Now, okay, I've said about these um, changes in direction. Now, this was another major change in direction where uh, I think that... Well, that's wrong. The, 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 that, that should be 83. I don't know where that's in. That should be 83. So we've, we've come out of the... Uh, uh, we're starting to... Uh, or I'm starting to paint. Um, I've lost... Um, I don't know what I've done really. I, I remember reading stuff. <laughs> that um, I lost a bit of uh, faith in uh, flat painting and modernism. And, and I started to change my technique. I started to work rapidly on panels. And, and that I would gesso, and um, I would just sort of push. I started working oils, and I discovered that oil, oil painting can, it, 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 it doesn't dry uh, for a long time. So you, that I would gesso, because the point was that, that's right, um, remembering that, the, the egg, egg tempera technique I was using, where I was letting it stain into a cotton duck, which is a white canvas, which, so, which was, uh, I didn't think it would last actually, but they have lasted quite well, this, the, uh, this unconventional way of using egg tempera. I decided to use egg tempera in the proper way, where you use it on a chalk ground, um, or a half chalk ground, which is um, for gesso with um, white pigment and a little oil, and rubber skin glue. So I was experimenting with all that, and I was experimenting on bits of panels, and I was starting to, 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 to put the the temper on in a different way altogether, and the temper then just became a kind of underpainting for oil, and so I started to use oil. So this is a start, and I, and I, I, and I, I was reading stuff as well that was sort of um, that was uh, pointing me backwards, if you like, past <coughs> another century or so. So I, I, I started to sort of paint in a way that, as if I, I wasn't aware of um, of Cezanne or. Cubism or modernism, um, and and, the, and the symbology and, and narrative became important rather than just form. So this that one is that's very small. It's just called work. I, I discovered I could I could do things from from nowhere. Just come out, uh, and they've got um, power and uh, uh, symbolic power. <laughs> So I'm moving along now, quite rapidly, and I, I, I haven't been, even though I, I won critical uh, success with the, um, the John Moore's painting and the Breakfast with Prometheus painting, and um, uh, um, we, we couldn't live off any of it, and not, not long after all that, I'd left the post office because I, I'd had enough for it, it, it was an interesting thing to do, and uh, I'd forgotten a lot. I, I, I didn't want to prove anything to Richard Miller, I forgot he existed, so, so <laughs> um, and I'm doing odd jobs, awful jobs really. I don't know why, I just didn't throw the towel in and get a teaching job, but, um, that's <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't want to go that old, but, uh, <laughs> sorry teachers, um, so, um, the symbology thing is going on. Oh yes, I, I'm starting to paint in this light, I'm starting to create this light thing. Because mm -hmm. um, you can do this, oil is like, uh, oil paint is, uh, it's like, it's, 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 it's a, a magician has this thing in his bag, he opens it and oil paint and he can do this. How do you get very, um, I, lo mm -hmm. I, I love, I could move the stuff around, that's a dreadful sight, but it's an important picture, it's called Steps. Um, so I was doing things that you wouldn't... In 1973, 74, I was painting in a style that was more akin to not even the, not even the 19th century, more like the 18th century. 
but my, my heroes were painters like that, and they'd always been in a way. So I, I've, got, I've got these heroes, like abstract expressionist heroes, uh, minimalist, uh, 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 serious abstract painters. And then I've got these heroes like Chardin and um, uh, Tiepolo and uh, Goyer. So uh, all pre, -foot, pre the invention of photography heroes. So this is, I'm, I'm schizophrenic. Well, this one is called, that's a dreadful slide. But it was, it was this thing when I, I'm scumbling about in, with these uh, panels of gesso. It's called the Annunciation. So I want you to see all of them. Now this is good. I'm sorry about these slides. Um, I'm going to skip this one because it's not good enough. So I, I, I've skipped quite a bit now. We're going 1990. And I'm doing a series of paintings called Turkish Bath Paintings, which are, based, which are inspired by, but not based on, of um, Turkish Bath Painting. Um, and the reason why I'm doing them really, even though it's so um, out of time, sort of supine news, I mean, who, uh, anyway, uh, I, I wasn't very smart politically in those days. Not very smart now, but, um, so because they, was big, they were big paintings that I did, this one is one of the smaller ones, and I did about 12 of them. And so we're getting into the 90s. And, and the reason why I did them was because I, I, I saw them, um, they, they initially came out of nowhere. They just came out of this scratching around of them. And I, I saw them as a way of getting away from symbol and narrative, where you would, you would just deal with the, the composition and the form of the painting. Uh, with, but, okay, you, you did have the content of a female form, the body, but you just used it, used it as much as possible in, to, you know, to, to show direction. And it just sort of... I had this ability to not need models. Um, I could just create space um, for me. It's almost like abstract expressionism. I, I used to think that abstract I, people like de Kooning. I used to think he was he was he was a, he was a, a continuation of people like um, uh, Rubens in many ways because the, the I, I believe the the old masters that pre photographic old masters, where the, 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 I, I believe they improvised their forms, you know, these very complex compositions of histories and battles. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't believe they had models for any of that. They improvised their forms. They, they had a way of painting, which is well, not that far from Wilhelm de Kooning, who's a very abstract expressionist painter. Uh, um, but it's just that they, they, they worked harder and harder at it, and, and they drew out of their... A bit like uh, Michelangelo believed that the, 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 the forms were already in the stone waiting to be carved out. It's a, sort of, it's a way of sort of, um, and, and because of that, and that's what I thought I was doing with these. Uh, I, and I didn't need the sort of, uh, uh, the power of a symbol or a narrative. I could just, I could just work on a formal level. This, this is one of the, the it's not a bad slide, it's a very, very big painting. Uh, and that's been on the show in the studio. Mm -hmm. So, uh, heck of a job to move it. I did, the, the, I did three that size, and two of them are definitely in, in the Lamb film. Because <laughs> 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 artists, uh, every now and again, they've got to move studios, you know. And you, you just can't, if you, you can't sell everything. So, what you've got, you, you, you've got a bonfire or a skip every now and again. <laughs> because you cannot. And unless you've got, unless you're very wealthy and very famous, and you've got a team of people who are, are, are um, looking after things like that. So anyway, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm not like, and this, this was the best one. This is the, the, and as I was saying before, the way I paint is very hit and miss, and I'm only showing you the the, 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 the results really of the, the ones I'm happy with. But the, the two in landfill. But I used to be a dustman as well as a postman, actually. <laughs> and, uh, this up. And the, the thing is about working in the dust up, there's something called scratching, where you, you, you rescue things, you know. When, when I, used to, I used to hand them in very posh Jewish houses, and they, when they redo their kitchen, they throw out perfectly good uh, kitchen appliances. And so they used to go back to the little depot in Hendon. And you would have, have I told you this? Uh, you no. know, this? They, they would have a, a, a wedding list up, which of the boys who were getting, getting married. And, and, and the next bridge is going to Malcolm and Suda. So I have, when I, when I go through these, 
paintings, I cut them up because they, they, they looked like carpet when I took them down the dump. They rolled up and they threw it in. And then I had a, I had a sleepless night. Susan was mad with me that I did. I had a sleepless night and I got in the car the morning after and drove down to the municipal dump. I was expecting them to have been rescued and rolled and they were pinned to the, the railings going down. Going down. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't. They weren't. It's okay. <laughs> Now, I'm getting back to Wales now. Now, before I... Oh, the, the, yes, the Turkish Bath exhibition was a flop. A complete flop. And it was something to do with the times. And then they were too big. And, and, and you know, I wasn't as good an artist as I thought I was. And so, uh, two or three years were nothing. So, and then... Um, I don't know if you remember the early 90s, but a, it was a crisis. Uh, Lawson was... You know, the, um, the economic crisis. And, the, and Lawson kept putting the interest rates up. So uh, my, my mortgage rate before we left London was like 16 percent, and, and uh, loads of people in negative equity, and then people just sort of throwing themselves off the top of buildings. Um, it wasn't funny, <laughs> but um, uh, so we had to leave London because we got ourselves we, we overstretched ourselves quite a bit, and um, but I, I I I was doing this um, as a after my after, um, reaction to the failure of the Turkish Bath, I was doing these as other paintings. Um, this, was a, this began as a very small painting. I keep talking about these small improvisations I was doing, but that's how they were. A lot of them didn't amount to anything, but this amounted to a larger painting. Now, why I did it, I don't know. Why I decided that these uh, the sensual ladies on the beach should be doing something as sort of transcendent or, or intellectual as a geometry lesson is, you know, uh, uh, but I did that and I took, um, I didn't paint them until I got back to Wales because we used to spend our childhood on, on beaches so much, you know, so it was, it was quite a nice theme to start when I got back to Wales. But they came down from London with me, lots of small studies about, and they were like, I regarded them as a packet of seeds. I was taking down to Wales, and then some of them would become. Okay, this is a quite a successful picture that Kazu bought. Um, when, uh, well, uh, it, it got no, it didn't get seen in Cardiff. It got went back up to London, and Kazu sent somebody um, up to London to buy it. Was that good of Wales to do that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, just the same as um, running away with a hairdresser. That was in London, even though I painted it in my in Fatty Brongi, in my near my stay. It, um, David Alston, who was keeper of paintings in the National Museum at, uh, at the time, went up to London to buy it, and then brought it back to Cardiff. Anyway, this is um, this is an another one of those sort of seeds uh, seeds in my in my um, carrier bag. This is like a deposition, I suppose. But it's not a deposition, but it's, yeah, it's beach. Yeah, love and peace. Oh, I was having fun. Oh, no, no I, I, then I started to get serious. Um, this is a young man running away. Now, this is, this is, this is, um, it's not a complicated image, it's not a complicated narrative, it's very simple. But sometimes that's when painting works best, really, is when it's, it's, um, it's just running away from a, a, a terraced house. Is a, perhaps he's, he, he's not running, yeah, he's running from his, his background, I suppose. But, or he's pursuing something, I don't know. But I knew it was, it, it, it was worth something. So I, I, I put another figure in, and then it became a different meaning altogether. This is running away with a hairdresser. <laughs> and, and because he's running away with a woman, now, he could be just going around the corner to live with... He could be just having an affair. But so he hasn't got, it hasn't got that... Uh, but I didn't mind that. I didn't mind the fact that the, it had lost the strength of the, of the small picture of the single figure. So anyway, I'm right back in Wales now, and this is all going on. This is um, uh, where I was living at the time in the Tleti Brongi, in the the uh, Darren Valley, just as you're going up in the Tleti Valley. I used to walk a lot. Uh, 
and then I started, I haven't got any here, no, I had um, paintings of, I, I walked a lot, I did some paintings on planet, but not a lot, I just used to uh, come back and invent stuff in the studio, but they, they had, I had sort of themes like um, uh, people flying kites, I had no colliers or anything, because there weren't any, mine, there weren't any um, pit heads there, but no, they'd all gone by then, 96, but the, so, I had people flying kites, so I don't know what these are doing. You can I say <laughs> that colour red? Yeah. yeah. There's a, a, a Clintry Valley artist, Christopher Williams. Oh, yes, yes. Marvellous artist who painted In My Stick, and he had a painting, Woman or a Girl in a Red Dress, which is very famous. It used to be in My Stick Town Hall. Yes. That red is the, is the, the same colour as mm. her dress, yes. which is a real statement in his painting, mm. and that's a statement in yeah, your painting, it I think. Mm. It's a pity it is not her hair, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's the figure, even though you can't see the face. She, she's the figure that I used. It's on the um, cover of the book. I just, it's a different painting. That's called Wales, that painting. And, and it's, just, it, it's just the figure of where her hair is sort of... It's sort of I call it, um, yeah, alliterates with the with the, the mountains behind. Is that a is that proper right use word? of alliteration? <laughs> uh, that's the right word. <laughs> <laughs> what is it in Welsh, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> what is it here? Yeah. I, I, I did something. I did a, a, a triptych, three paintings of, um, yeah. And I called it Kev uh, Cariad Triptych. And I said to someone, uh, you know, what's the Welsh for tri triptych? <laughs> uh, and they said, what's the English for triptych? <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, yes, but Kev uh, is a lot older than English, so I thought they, they, would, they might have had a word for it before. Yeah. Uh, this, is, uh, this is important. It's kind of important. Uh, uh, it's, it's, sorry, but sorry. I, I, I drew this scene, it's, it, I, I've driven through Cairo and I've been up to the top of the hill and I think they've got uh, scrambling, uh, scramble bikes and things up there now. But uh, at the bottom of the hill is Station Hotel, which is where I drew the background for running away with a hairdresser. And on the same day, I drove up the hill and looked back and drew this. I, I, my figures always come in in the studio much later, so, the, but, um, so it's kind of... Uh, 95 is kind, of, kind of an interesting because I used to make up my, my make up my stuff most of the time, but because the, running with the hairdresser was uh, uh, um, everything was coming together quite nicely, so that I, I will go out and I'll actually look for the um, the corners. I, I'll actually look for uh, the street scene that I want to go behind running with the hairdresser. So while I'm out, I also do this. Um, uh, so, um, I, this, a funny thing is, when you have managed to get into your paintings, uh, topographical or actual places, and people have associations or, or passages in their life where they've, where, they, where they've been to those places, or they know them, or they're the, the town that they're from, gives, it gives, there's, a, there's quite a, um, I never used to be aware of anything like that in London, but it gives them, uh, people feel much, people feel so attached to them that I think they can get an aesthetic, experience from looking at that painting because it's, they, they, they knew that that place is some part of their lives. In Running Away with a Hairdresser, for instance, there's a, um, the, the streets, uh, they're not very accurate, but somebody claims that, they, they, I, I, from Australia, I had an email from somebody in Australia who claims that she was brought up in one of the, one of the rooms above the, <laughs> in the background. Of, <laughs> the, yeah. Now this is the, just across the way from me, Station Road. Uh, it's, it's not a bad sign. It's, it's not very big, but I, I just like the positioning of the figure walking across the station or uh, walking along. Um, going to America. Yeah, this is more this is almost the same kind of area. It's the steps. I don't know if you know um, Pontryagin, but it's the steps that takes you up to Bronze Garage, and um, it's called Public Private Lives. I didn't see. I, 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 um, when, I, when I was living in my state, I tried to get a commission, and I tried to pay it again, in Gilbaco. So I was driving around Gilbaco looking for ideas. 
uh, there was a commission for a piece of public art for a, a leisure centre or something. And uh, I was driving, and I noticed that the, the, the narrow street, the, the, the terraced houses, they probably didn't have much of a garden behind. And people put their libraries or their steamers mm -hmm. out on the pavement, out, outside the, the front door. So I thought I could use that. So, and much later then, I, 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 had, and I had this idea of putting sort of a public place where the washings were, and the people's washings were up, where I think, and, and you sort of um, enjoy the, the sense and it's just something very, so you were talking about Mediterranean colours, there's something very Mediterranean about that way of behaving, and, um, uh, and again, it's, uh, it's good, it's, it's um, a very big painting, it took me 20 years to sell it. <laughs> well, it's just, Came and went, and then I, I just kept it hidden for eight. I didn't keep it hidden; it's just in the back of the studio. And then I, I went, I went back, started to exhibit in London again in like 2012. And somebody who married a girl from Cowbridge, and I think has a second house in the Vale, bought it. Um, but he worked for um, Marilyn Lynch. So, but the connections. Very good. It's, it's very, it's, they sort of when people have a loyalty because of certain connections, it's, it's a lifeline. Excuse me. Can I ask why you put the the, the, the art on the houses in the top left hand corner of oh, the last one? Well, I, do you remember why you did it? No. Well, it was a Benedon advertisement. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I, I, I compressed. Uh, you could, that's on the top of Oxford Street. You can't see that from the quadrille. Yeah. But I compressed things. I, I, I put it there. Might have been. Go back now. Oh, I go the wrong way. Ah, oh, sorry. I got it. Uh, yeah, it, it was um, Benetton. What's the name? Benetton. Yeah. 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 But that's what it is. Or why I put it up there? I don't know. It just. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You don't have to know. You know, just the same when uh, Andre Stitz painting the last show that was in the last show that was in uh, Studio 18, very complicated geometric paintings, uh, and um, people wanted to know what they were. Just surface, just look at the surface. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, this uh, I like this picture. Uh, right. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called Buddies. I don't know why or when or how it came about, but it's about sort of uh, a couple of chaps leaving, going home from a rugby match, I suppose, and larking about. But it's it's, it's in Berlin. Really? Renowned for its rugby. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, they, they, they do like rugby in, uh, in, in uh, well, colleges sure, in. in uh, Colleges in, in um, is that Hasler or what? Oh, that was a big, that was a big oh, argument. Yeah, right? It was very big. I, I was trying to loosen up. I'm pretty loose anyway, but I was trying to loosen up further. But um, uh, yeah, uh, so I, mean, I, I wasn't thinking of rain. I just wanted to sort of check things about a bit. I just thought it needed it. But of course they got raincoats on, so I was thinking of rain. Yeah. But no, no, I, I, you do something from a doodle or something, and you don't... I, I could never have thought about that before I started painting. It's just something that happens. Don't think about things too much. Just do them, because there's, some, there's a force in, the, in, in the, um, the medium that you're using, you know. There's a, something... With, cause, uh, you, you'll never create anything if you know what you're going to do before you do it. That's not creation. So, so you don't search, you discover. As uh, Picasso said. The first quote from Picasso. <laughs> not really full of them, <laughs> this is celebration. I don't know what this is. This is just messing about. But then, but then it, it ends up having a meaning because they're, they're all clapping or they're, so they could be dancing. So they and with, from very little information, with very little sort of rendering of <laughs> it becomes something. Again, you see, I couldn't have, I possibly could have thought of that, I don't know. Uh, this, this is a bit, um, this is 
of Valley View. Now this is very small, but it became a big painting. I, I haven't got a reproduction of the big painting. It's in San Francisco at the moment. And it'll stay there, hopefully I don't want it back. <laughs> <laughs> they, they want their money back <laughs> if they send it back. But this this is accurate as well. This is a um, this is on the um, on the west side of, of the of the Garo Valley. If you're looking down on uh, that's coming out of Pontycamo towards uh, Langaro. This would be uh, the cricket ground. I don't know if you know the cricket ground in uh, in the Garo Valley. It's really lovely. Um, <laughs> it's it's hidden. And if I find it as you're driving up the valley, you have to come over across and you go towards the left and you circle around past narrow lane and you come to this lovely patch of well kept green and people in whites and drinking tea and eating homemade cakes. Fantastic. <laughs> and it's just not associated with the stereotypes of the valleys, is that <laughs> Yeah. Okay. It keeps it a keeps the it keeps the truth a secret as I point. Anyway, this is tired ladies. This is see with uh, we used to, we bred pointers for a little while, and um, yeah, we, I don't have any dogs now. We've got a cat, but we we had a we had a we, we had three at one stage. Um, uh, that's uh, Gigi, Molly, and. Samson isn't there, Sam. Um, yeah, which point is? I mean, you know, I'm thinking about these. I'm putting these together, these paintings. They're not, they're, they're like the painting of buddies. You can see where I'm, I'm being truthful when I say that I'm impossible. But I thought about this. The, 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 this is out of the blue. This is sort of hit and miss painting. I did call it pickpocket at one stage. <laughs> and Martin Jean said, You can't call a painting pickpocket. So I just came up with this idea of at your shoulder. I don't know what, what it means. That's in Germany. It's about right, 2003, I think. This is a, the, the, there was a nursery in, uh, in London where, where the grandchildren was going, and it was called Building Blocks. I quite like that, the idea of blocks. Again, the fantastic light in the garu. Yes, why not? It looks like Greece to me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's called glue. This is very This is in Germany. A pastor in Germany bought this. Now, there's no translation for glue in Germany. They had to change the title. Because I'm using it as a noun and a verb. The, the, the kid is gluing the, the two adults together. There isn't a single word that would do that in Germany. Mm. See, that the title is glue. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm not fluent in German, but the, the English professor that used to put these shows on is very fluent. Mie's painting in the, Nash, in the National Museum of Wales of the Dutch peasants. They've got their clogs on. It's unfinished painting, and they're about to go out to work. And they are like columns, the man and the woman. And there's a child, he's in front of them. And I had these paintings. I, well, they weren't the mere, my mere paintings, they were just paintings of couples that were very stark, very columns like that. And I pinched Mie's idea of having the child between their legs. But I, I, did I call it glue? I, I don't think that was the idea of Mie in these things. So I, 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 mean, I don't often acknowledge that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing here today. I'm telling all my secrets. <laughs> this is our own planet. I don't do a lot of it, but this is the, the garo in. Um, yeah. So you're coming out of the garo. I don't, so you're, you're, you're walking along the, the river towards. Um, I'm by there, the bridge, I suppose. Is it? Hmm? I know exactly what that is. By the bridge, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A very good watercolorist now, Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> or you always work on planet? You always work for. Uh, and uh, it's a sort of summer evenings, booked till about 8 o'clock. The light is fantastic, it's low in the sky. And, um, and this is, that's just a few. I'm lucky, it comes off sometimes. You, you can't be lucky with the water coming. Can I do that? Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Yeah, this is very good painting. This is in Bridget, a collector in Bridget. Uh, Nicholas Hegarty, and there are the Hegartys. Mm -hmm. he, he bought that from me. Mm -hmm. Hospital, no. is it? No. Yeah, that's right. No. It's, it's, it's in his offices on the Tomorrow Road. Um, he's going to loan me some paintings for my retrospective. Because one of the paintings he bought is very closely related to Running Away with a Hairdresser. So I will have some paintings that were um, painted at that time and were sort of surrounding paintings. Well, this is an interesting one coming up. This is me and Sue. There's Sue with her rockabilly DMs on. <laughs> and um, her fake fur coat from Marks and Spencer's. And we're standing in front of what became. Studio 18 in Oxford Street, Ponticama. Mm. I just decided to buy it and somebody up in London said, get over there now and take a photograph of you and Sue in front of it. So I got up to go back because I think it was an autumn day and Clive was still around. There's no one, it was a Saturday afternoon and Ponticama is, well, it's just dead most of the time. So there's nobody around but I got Clive in the, the, the shoe shop. <laughs> then, you know, Clive the boots in Ponticama. So I got him to come out to take a photograph of me and Sue, and uh, I sent it up to this guy in London. But um, now Clive was kind of instrumental, part of my plan, really, part of my concept, because Clive was, it was an old fogey. He, he was nothing like his brother Mark. He was a sort of, uh, he's wear deer stalker sometimes, and he wore brogues and barber jacket. And, and he was going to hold the keys for me, because uh, I wasn't there, you know. And he would have loved taking people around. He didn't know what an art gallery was, but he, he got to know it, what it was. And he thought, an art gallery in Oxford Street, this is going to be, you know, this is going to be interesting, he thought. There was something about an art gallery that had been opened up in the north of England, and they had sort of, and it was sort of, you know, that idea of uh, uh, Bilbao being transformed by the Guggenheim. It's not true. <laughs> it was much nicer before the Guggenheim got there. <laughs> and it just got some beautiful big squares in Bilbao. I went there to see the Guggenheim. Um, and it, of course it's a sensational building. But I don't know what they were talking about. This drab industrial town has been transformed by this Guggenheim. It's not the case. But anyway, so... Um, um, uh, Clive had a massive heart attack about a year ago. So... Hey, that, that's the, um, okay, we're doing a little bit of box. Does anyone want to go home now? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, that's what it is. Yeah, that's fine now. So, two years oh, later, that's, uh, that's, the, oh, that, that's the launch of the gallery. There's my history paintings all over the place. People everywhere. That's the architect, actually. Uh, John Evans. That's my niece, Julia. Hey, lots of people there. Um, and that's what I call the old, well that's what is this still, that's on the window of the, of the, of the, of the gallery, London, New York, Monte Carlo. <laughs> Some bits, I, 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 I don't get the, uh, um, some people like to laugh at it because it's, it wasn't meant as a joke but, but I can see it as being funny because of its surprise where it is. But some people compare it to a uh, Del Boy on um, on his three wheeler car. What's he got? He's got something like Paris. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, there we go. So I mean, there was people. Oh, God. There were people. Um, the, the rugby club is just up the road, and when they have home matches, the, uh, the visiting team will be uh, will be walking down the hill sometime, and they were sort of like. You'd be People generally having a snigger about the state of Ponty Camera, and then he, and then they came to London, New York, for, uh, and they were <laughs> cracking themselves up. <laughs> the I, I didn't like that very much. Um, anyway. uh, that was one of the history paintings, just the, the boxing field, which is full of uh, myth actually. But I'm sure uh, uh, so many people. Demand that it, 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 it was that that little plateau above <coughs> Kethley Ron's cemetery was used as a, as a, a boxing venue. But I don't think it was so much a boxing venue with a ring. I think people who had uh, um, an argument in the pub earlier on in the evening would go up to <laughs> settle the score uh, up in that part. Of, I don't know. But anyway, it, 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 that, that is, 
that's a wish, bit wishy-washy about that. Um, there's little things that, when you're just imagining things as you're working through a composition, little obvious sentimental things like the farmer with the newborn lamb here, mm -hmm. contrasting with the, the brutality of the boxing, there's the um, Yeah, I twisted the, you, you, if you were there at, at that part of the mountain, you wouldn't be looking up the valley, you'd be looking across to the other side. But I like, uh, um, okay. that's uh, Pulkar. But do, do, you, do you know the, what the, the local name for this part of this, this mountain is? Horses back, cows back or something. Anyways, it's my mont saint I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. This is about the Anderson family, and this is why. New uh, York. Yeah, this is why um, London, New York, Ponty Camel was was kind, really, because they they were a, a family from London, a, a musical family from London, who did a short stay stay in New York, season in New York. And for some mysterious reason, when they came back on the uh, Philadelphia or something, the ship, they um, they drove with their maiden, uh, four mem two, three members of the family, and one was the, the husband of Amy, and they drove to um, in their Argyle car. They drove to Ponty Camera and settled in Bridge End Road. This was before the First World War. Completely bizarre and completely true. Factual. There was a, there was a series of of um, a syndicate of of roller skating buildings, which were very big buildings throughout a, 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 in England as well, I think, but all throughout South Wales. And they quickly lost. Uh, they, they they didn't become as lucrative a business venture as they thought, and they changed, and they became emporiums of entertainment, hippodromes of entertainment, emporiums. Um, of entertainment. Um, the old that Highfield Church that was up Gordon Road behind the post office used to be a roller skating rink. Yeah, yeah, there were quite a few. And, and I, I assume that the Andersons must there must have been a, they must have read a trade paper while they were sailing over that their uh, management was being advertised for. So they, so they ended up running up and they stayed in Pony you know, for a long time. In fact, there is there's a descendant of them still. Padusna, <coughs> who um, I, I talk to quite a lot. Um, was that the Lane Pathy still alive then? Oh, I yeah, have no connection there. No. I know, yeah, but, but, but the just the, from Wales had you know, these pretty amazing yeah. yes. entertainments. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, because the, what, was, what you're talking about is, it, they, uh, by as hard as life was, it was where they earned their money. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have transport, people didn't race out and go up to London or Cardiff. They spent their money. So you had music halls and you had theatres. In you had, I think there was two theatres in 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 my stay in the Flinby Valley, and um, so so you did have people who would visit the valleys, and and of course you had the you had the railways there, who were much penetrated the country much more efficiently than than they do now, and so you you had you had ways for these people to to to, to come and earn, earn their living by entertainment. Uh, so, I mean, people th think it's also bizarre that uh, the, the streets of Pony Kemmer could have been so busy. But I got an American uh, daughter in law, and she said, Kevin, are, are you sure the streets were ever that busy? Of course they were. They were bustling with people, you know, in the, in the early, early, early. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's the bit of that. That's, that's um, Ronda Bauer. I, I sort of. Uh, I, the history paintings were all about Tony Hammer, but I did sort of wander off a little bit. I had this idea of a kind of, um, you can't really see it, but this guy is shaking his fist at the sky. So there's a kind of, um, the, the colour is dreadful. Desolation. Yes, right. But there's a, kind of, there's a kind of leisure as well. Uh, and you, you drive through, you're driving up towards the Rickhouse, I suppose. And, um, and you can look back. It's not exactly lush green. You wouldn't have that. There's lots of outcrops of rock. But then I, I you know, I, I imagine that you would have sites here. Yeah. And then there's my kite flyer, uh, which is a kind of signature. Uh, Rondeval is the greatest um, 
coal producing valley in the world at the, at the time. I imagine that was. Uh, right, the, 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 the Hippodrome, uh, when the Andersons managed it, they did get people like leading you know, suffragettes. The people used to come, people used to come and do lecture tours and they used to come into places like that. You know, you had, at the, at the, halfway through the First World War, that German pacifist came here and gave a, gave a talk in Ponte Cabo. It, it's difficult to imagine now when you've got sort of 24 hour news and they, and they repeat the same thing every 15 minutes that, that you had uh, you had sort of uh, information being disseminated like that. This is, this is um, uh, Nina Boyd, I think her name was. She was quite a leading, you can look her up, she was, she was quite a leading suffragette. Uh, and she gave two talks in, um, on, the is it on, on uh, suffrage, of course, female suffrage. But at the time, it's interesting to know that uh, not all men had the vote. You know, you had to be a house owner. Uh, uh, so I, I, I think I changed the notice of that. Vote. Votes for all, rather than votes for women. Where you need to buy the, the notice on the on the But um, the, this is a, a Giacomo Bala, an, an Italian futurist. He did a dog. He did a famous. Um, uh, the, the the futurists tried to paint movement without actually, without movement. I mean, yeah. on on a uh, that in canvas. And it, there's this famous dog with with, with the leash. His legs are spinning. A bit crazy, really. But I thought uh, Nina could be taking the dog for a walk, and she's walking into the future, where this chap with, with a, <laughs> a stick and board is going back the other way into the past. Excuse you. you know, all these things have to be discovered, you see. Let's do Tim Price. From afar. I mean, no, he obviously left Tim Tom in Flangina by then. He was, <coughs> he was uh, educated and. But he, he was um, he was a nonconformist, so you, you couldn't get into Oxbridge if you if you didn't belong to the Church of England. The time. So he he was um, there was a thing called a university without walls, it's a radical radical transport um, reformers, the radical reformers. You had for Tom Paine and lots of leading people, intellectuals at the time, would have been associated with that. Uh, uh, intellectual movement. So he was a great supporter of the French Revolution. He was a supporter of um, American independence. He, he wrote letters to it. Uh, it seems that he um, he encouraged the Boston Tea Party. That's, that's what they are doing here. I had a great breakthrough. I thought I was going to have to. I thought I was going to have to research what the Boston Harbor looked like, and then I I, I remembered. And I don't know how apocryphal it is that the Bostonians that did this thing dressed up as Red Indians in order to deflect the, the blame from them. So I thought, oh, I'll just have Red Indians. Uh, and you could see some tea chests just about. Uh, this, this is uh, Richard on his way to school with his Welsh mother. Now, the mistake there, sorry, the mistake. The, 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 the traditional Welsh costume did not exist then. It was created by Lady Landover of Abergavenny in something like 18. 50, something like that, mm -hmm. and this, this is a good um, 80 years before that, or 60 years before that, so I got quite angry. So I did lots of um, Welsh lady uh, paintings where they're being attacked by geese, or their hats are being blown off in the wind, I don't know if anybody saw any of those, but that's a response to the fact that uh, <laughs> I put this Welsh lady in heaven. The top, top right hand corner of that, is that type and tree? The top right hand corner is, is, is a guillotine. Oh, good. Oh, right, okay. Yes. Anyway, this is, um, it's not a bad slide, but it's, it's um, 19, uh, 1926, the miners' lockout. And you had, you always had, when if you had protests in ways, but they, they, they would always have a carnival aspect to them, you know? Um, people would dress up in fancy dress and you'd have a float. And, and that's a great opportunity for imaginary painting. This is a study. It's not tiny, but it's a, a study. It's about this big. The painting itself, I don't know if you remember it, Robert, in, in Studio 18, is, is very big. Yeah. And I kind of messed about with that. 
then of course. Well, most people now, they don't even know who he is, they don't remember what a hammer and a sickle is. That might seem an exaggeration, but it um, And there was, at that time, the 20s, there were, there were youth movements that used to sort of um, c c communicate with Russia, and the Russians would, would send all the stuff, food parcels and things. So, uh, I, I, so I, I got the banner from a photograph. It wasn't used like that. It was used in SOS's Struggle or Starve, something like that. It was, um, there, there, there was a march from Wales to Bristol. The annual TUC conference was being held in Bristol. There was a march of the unemployed, and they had a banner like that. And I, and I put it in, in the Falder Square, probably coming in 1926. I think painters can do that, can't they? <laughs> you know. well, they're allowed. What? Yeah, they're allowed to do that. <laughs> so they, 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 this isn't this isn't too remote. I mean, I know you're Mexican, but you could, they could be dressed, they would dress up and stuff like that. And this float has got you can't really see it, but open for jobs. So it would be a sort of um, and I, I, I kind of took a lot of these images of people from photographs that I knew we were going around. Um, that, that I knew were taken at the time. They, they had jazz bands that just started to come, and that's what's happening here. In, on the big painting, you can see it in more detail. Um, kids that have been uh, uniforms, playing combs with paper, and that kind of thing. And just started to crop up. And that's what you'd have in, um, and you still had it in the last big miners' strike. You still had this business of of incorporating when the miners went back to 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 work um, uh, in England, they, they had long faces. In in the Ronda, apparently, um, Kim House is telling me they 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 went back with with bands playing music and stuff. Mm. Extraordinary. Mm. Um, so that's um. Right, let's get. It. Oh. oh, this is the big picture. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, the, the, the red is far too red. The, this guy here with this whip lick in his face, they, there was a photograph of a, a band of vigilantes who were keeping out the, the bailiffs from the homes. You know, they would go around and protect the homeowners from being thrown out. Um, and I saw that in this bandage. And then lots of um, mining communities had, and they would have two whips. They would have a couple of whippets. They would be uh, their pets and they would race them, of course. <laughs> The whip is just about licking his wound. But usually you can do this sort of thing when you're working from, yeah, working in that way. But, right, I don't know how this has happened actually. They're out of sequence. Yeah. Oh no, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. It's good. Yeah. So now you see this. This is the two. Anyway, there's the Richard Price. There's the Nina Boy. Um, This is a local hero, I can't remember his name now, Buddy Eddington, who fought with Tommy Farr, uh, the famous um, Welsh boxer who went over to, to Manson Square Gardens to fight Joe Lilly. And uh, everybody knows, everybody in the valley would tell you about uh, Buddy Eddington. Uh, you can't fight much about him in print, but. Uh, uh, so my, my history paintings are, are more to do with local um, oral, uh, a little bit of mythology perhaps. But the, the, one of the days he fought, he fought Tommy Fine Triallo, which is, is, is almost two valleys away, quite, um, and he walked. He, he done a morning shift, and this is where it could be mythological. He did a morning shift in the um, Blind Arrow. Um, he played, uh, in the afternoon, he played in the front row for... <laughs> and then he walked with his entourage to Triago, right, to the, the judge's hall in Triago. And he, he didn't beat Tommy Farr, but he took him 15 rounds on points, and he uh, Tommy Farr won. Tommy Farr apparently is known to have said that, in preparation for the fight, I was going to say, put his feet up and watch the television, but he didn't have television there. <laughs> so he put his feet up and listened to the radio. But he always said, and this is, journalists have written it, but you get, it makes, things in print aren't necessarily true. 
the toy father said that the hardest man he ever fought was Bunny Ellington from, from the Garrow. So he fought Tommy Farber three times. Um, and so I, I've, I've got him kind of walking over, and I wonder what I got him doing. He's got a miner's lamp, he's got his boxing gloves around him. And the stag, which is quite important, is um, the symbol for Blaggar Rugby Club. And it's also Karu, or Garu, is the Welsh for, for stag, depending on whether they use the G or not. Yeah. So, uh, why am I mentioning stag? Oh yes, because I had a big stag in the gallery. Um, what have I done? I've done, I've gone. i finished. So, it's not sad. Right. <laughs> you can ask me questions now. Whoa! <laughs> Kevin, is that it? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. I, I, Kevin, I'm going to get Kevin a glass of wine, but please. Does he want any questions? Yeah, do you want oh, yeah, to yeah. ask questions? Yeah. Yeah. Have anybody got a question? Which one's the hairdresser? Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Well, if you speak well, I should know. No, I it's not true. <laughs> they, when they bought it, they, they contacted me straight away and they wanted to know which one was the hairdresser because the Welsh translation of running away with the hairdresser would have a gender specific ah, right. name for hairdresser. It, it's the woman. But I, 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 I don't know if that's any fluid way I speak here. I don't know if that is yeah. true, really. That the, 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 is there, oh, right, I, is there a, a masculine and feminine word for hairdresser? I, I don't know. No, okay. I don't know. But uh, they, they asked me. I, I prefer to be left to mystery with really. me. I was in them. Um, I, I was in the House of Pain, Stradley, were, not Stradley Park, which is the, which is the um, yeah. rugby ground for... Um, yeah. I think Sardis the Road in Port de Prix. Sardis Road, I was in Sardis Road. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we were having a drink and, and there'd been something on the telly at the meeting room. And who the people I was with were sort of were deriding me for being such a populist artist group. Because the, there was a gang of people, in the girls in the... Um, Shouted out which one's the hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> so I was being, as I said, derided by him for being such a populist. When you were working on the big multi figured pieces, yes. and I know the historical ones, you, you said you sort of researched to an extent, yeah. is a lot of it still kind of happening on the page, as you, so to speak, in the yeah. way that you're, of your earlier work, is it, is it sort of forming itself? Oh, definitely. So you've got some structure. Yeah, and then the, 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 the structure takes, the, the, uh, the real forming it of itself as, a, uh, as you're travelling through this, sort of, as you're sort of, yeah, immersing yourself in the, the medium, the gesture and the limitations, etc. Uh, it takes place on, when those big paintings were done, nearly everyone had a study. They, they, they weren't those little things on panels, they were about this size, but they were, and that's where all the, 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 the mining, the sort of the right. digging up was taking place. And I, I, I could have, I, the, the, uh, well, public private life, which is as big as any of those uh, history paintings, the painting I showed you, about, uh, that was created more or less from a blank canvas and, you know, just messing about. How do you prefer working, which, which, which is your favourite? Well, just I, 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 in front of the canvas and, and, yes, and, and yes, mine is. Yes, yes, that's right, yes. Get down there and look for a rich seam. Yeah. Sometimes it comes out and sometimes it doesn't. I don't show you the times it doesn't. Can <laughs> <laughs> you, sorry, um, for your training, did you do a lot of life drawing? And I didn't. Sort of, well, I, I, I was... Because it's like they're always so good. Oh, well, it's not. But when I do life drawing, they're quite wooden and, and oh. um, I, the, I was. Um, I went to Foundation in Cardiff, where they, it, it was an era with... Oh, Tom Hudson was there, I don't know if anybody really knows this. But it was very Bauhaus orientated, so it was very sort of industrial sort of uh, design, new design sort of orientated. And, and they poo pooed anything like uh, even working with a, a soft pencil, let alone doing life drawing. So you know, everything had to be rather precise. So I, but I, I, I sort of rebelled a little bit and I managed to get away from there. But I, I, I'm not uh, a deriding, I had an incredible work ethic in Cardiff at the time. And um, I took that with me to other places, but um, 
but not life drawing. And then I went and showed them. I, I, I did request a model once or twice, and it was a male model, you know, school. It had just started to be, you know, you had to go to um, a London school, I suppose, um, uh, to, to to get that. But I didn't do life drawing. And, there's, and that's after seven years in art school because after my degree, I went on to postgraduate and, and then I'm a, and it was a three year postgraduate. So I come out after seven years of art school and I'm a postman. My father's going crazy. <laughs> 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 uh, but how much did working in banal jobs like, well, I don't yeah, know, a banal job being a postman yeah, no, it's interesting. and being I know a dustman enhance I, I know where you're going. Art. I, I often think that, because uh, uh, what I was trying to do all the time, I used to nip off the bike every now and again and go to the, the reading room in the library and go, and go through the Guardian and look for jobs. In uh, I wasn't poo poo in teaching, but I would look for sort of visiting lecture jobs in art schools. But I often used to think that uh, that the um, once you're in in Scotland something like that and you're talking to fellow tutors in the, the common room, and you're getting all your you, you're getting all your supply of stimulus or artistic stimulus from that activity, whereas I was getting it from actually going down to the East End, to my studio. And I think I was, I was probably more fired. I was always, because of that, might be explained why I was more fired up. But did you get it from being a postman, just from, from that? Well, not specifically a postman. I, I had a good time as a dustman, too. But <laughs> not specifically a postman. But the hours, the, the post office hours were very favourable, actually. Because you could, it's a bit, I don't know what it's like now, but you could work overtime, with, 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 which wasn't actually time. You would double up on, somebody, on somebody's round who was on holiday. And, and so, and, and if you were sharp, you were still finished midday, but you were filling out an overtime document. So, so, um, so what, what am I talking about? But the, the, the thing is about that. Um, what did your father thing? do then? What? What did your father do? My father was was a, a, a nurse in uh, in Glen Reed in um, Penavale. I don't know if you know oh, the district. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But um, well, I was going to say something about um, yeah. I, you see, what happened when I was a postman? I we used to do the eleven o'clock post, and I'd be riding around on my bike, and I'd be fired up like hell because I knew it wouldn't be long before I'd be in the studio. I really was fired up, you know. Now I don't think I would have ever been that fired up no. if I was doing a job that was supplying me with with yeah. sort of yeah. satisfaction or mm -hmm. supplying me with with um, you know, being able to apply what I'd been learning in art school for so long. But, I couldn't do that. But could you get stuff from being a postman, you know, in contrast to well, the yeah, art well, world? It might have even been ironically a bit exotic that you incorporated well, yes, but, into your painting. Well, <laughs> Breakfast with Prometheus is a direct yeah. result of being a postman. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing breakfast paintings. Because breakfast is the most important mm. meal to a postman. Yeah. <laughs> when a postman's having breakfast, he's already done half a day's work, yeah. literally. Because yeah. you started at five o'clock, mm. and so when you're having your breakfast, say half past eight or nine o'clock, you know you've got you, the simplest thing tastes like nectar from the gods, you know, <laughs> cornflakes and milk. You know? yeah. Seriously, it's like I, I, I spent for, for farmers as much the same. I suppose you get up very early and you go out and you do working crack of dawn, and you get back and you have breakfast with other people, and you and you just enjoy the most. Simple food. Mm. You have a lot of mental free space when you're doing things like postman or that. Yeah. Mm. Like. You, 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 you mind come on their own around you. Yeah. You have to think about lots of things. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Wonderful. Did your contemporary actually get back into painting all, of, all the time in years? He's sort of well, he has. Teaching. Did he, he do he any painting, painting there? Or? I liked him because I thought he was one of the best painters in our world. He's an abstract painter, but I always thought Richard, he'd gone to St. Martin's before he went into, mm. into the Royal College. One of the guys in the, one of my group who was doing this, revisiting the 20th century modernism I was talking about, used to have a theory that the, the best way to get to a long postgraduate in London was to come from the provinces. People who'd already been, who'd already done three years, three, four years in St. Martin's or Goldsmiths or something, would then, I don't know, they wouldn't be able to sort of appreciate or make the most of. The, the, the Royal College. 
Anyway, no, that, that was the case for me because I had come yeah. from Cheltenham or Gloucester College of Art before I went to mm. Bernadette. Uh, once or twice you used the phrase run into or run away from, and the separate, you know, she was going to the future. So, so a little bit of, you know, that gave you kind of way to run to or. I don't get that. That's right. So the, the, the separate, the, the separate jet, you know, she was Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Nina. Yeah. yeah. Nina Boyd, yeah. So somebody going back and then the hairdresser. Running okay. Away. Well, that's yeah. very you, you used the phrase, was, is he running away from? Or yeah, is he yeah. running to? Yeah, so interesting. So is that you and the posting? Were you sort of running from? Ah, you know, oh, God. To? I hear you. I leave that up to you. Once the painting leaves you, mine, it does leave you. People can interpret it any way they want, really, once it goes to somebody else. Yeah, right. Ownership or... Are you still as excited by going to your studio? Oh, yeah. It's it stupid, it? isn't it? No. I mean, I should have retired ages ago. But I can't. And now, I, I don't go on holidays. <laughs> well, I, I used to go on holidays, but now the studio's in a home. My, my wife's in a home. And I haven't travelled for about six years. But, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't observe weekends. I definitely do not observe bank holidays. They irritate me <laughs> endlessly because the schedule on the radio has all changed. <laughs> 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 the change in your work is absolutely tremendous. Mm -hmm. You know, from the early work yes. to, you know, mm -hmm. sort of like, sort of the freedom and the colour mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the joy um, in your later work. Yes. Was, was that a big change in your life or something? Yeah, it was a big change. And it was, uh, I was reading Emil Zola, this sounds awful, you should never take, uh, an artist should never take, a visual artist should never take direction from the literary world. <laughs> but I read Emil Zola's Lure, or the masterpiece or something, and it was his book about, uh, people say it's about money, but it was about Cezanne. I, it's a very sort of um, dystopic, um, view of what was happening in the art world in, in Paris Street, really, how um, Zola uh, viewed um, how the Impressionism and, and the, the revolution that was taking place, he, he looked upon it with disdain, really. it was more of a, a, a bourgeois um, expression than the sort of, uh, uh, um, and the idea of, um, I, mean, I don't agree with it, but, but he did, he, he, you, know, you do start to think about things that you've taken for granted, and I started to look back on, on painting and what excited me and what I wanted to do. But he's, um, uh, he, he's talked about decadence, in, uh, de decadence or, or ceasing to inherit the achievements of the earlier generation or earlier schools or earlier mm. periods, centuries, sort of breaking away with, I don't know exactly the definition of degenerate, put sort of... Uh, Fascist art and Hitler in the background, and, and what what exactly the, the the definition of decadent was? But in Zola's eyes, it was the sort of um, uh, ceasing to respect the past, and sort of and therefore not inheriting achievements and continuing that way, but rather breaking breaking off. Mm. And so, uh, I, mean, I mean, people didn't like the novel; it was too romantic. But he had he had some good. Um, he said he arguments in it, and uh, it set me off on a on a, um, this sort of reverse gear. I used to call it. I was teaching in Saint Martin's at the time when I was very much involved in the sort of the idea of all over painting and abstract uh, flatness and and um, uh, and I felt and I felt and I had a period when I started to paint in oils where I, I kept it secret. I painted for about two years without showing anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and, think, and stuff which started to do that. I started to make results. I did that extraordinary, um, out of time, anachronistic painting called Steps. It was a bad slide, but you might have seen it. Mm. Um, I actually went to speak to some of the, lecture, the senior tutors in St. Martin's. I felt like an apostate. I felt I had to sort of, um, I had to come clean and say, no, I don't know if you want me to teach you anymore. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, and then not, not long after that, I was, um, a new image painting started to mix stories and, and the whole thing was blown up anyway, you know, the whole sort of, uh, uh, you didn't have to go down a certain, between certain tram lines, you could uh, go off it. The, 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 um, the idea of um, linear development or mainstream, almost forgotten the word, the idea of mainstream sort of lost its sort of power for a while. Um, and it has done completely now, but it's gone... But it's, it's no 
I have no reason to you know, celebrate that there's no mainstream anymore because there's no um, there's no painting anymore. <laughs> Without thinking, you've within ten seconds. Who are your five favourite? Oh, I can't answer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not in school. I'm not answering. Ah. <laughs> Because the, the, there was sort of various scenes in your paintings, like, you know, the construction there was quite gory, or the light was gory. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Well, I, I like the all your schmitz in the other ones. the invention of photography, which is a funny, a funny sort of watershed to, to find. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's paintings like Chardin. Is it Chardin? Yeah. Chardin. Mm -hmm. We did fantastic still lives. And fantastic. I did the, the, the card, the, the girl building a card house. It's, it's in the National Gallery in, in London. Um, house of Cards. Uh, and then there's sort of uh, David, if you want to be um, um, disciplined and strict. Mm. Or there's uh, Delacroix, if you want to paint a bit more like I paint now. Yeah. Uh, what um, about Marc Chagall? Are you influenced at all by well, there, there Chagall? Some of those because breakfast I just paintings. Sort of pick it up a bit. You know, yeah, some paintings. of those breakfast paintings with floating heads. That, <laughs> Um, but not now. I might have done. I might it's have a done. kind of joy um, in some yeah. of them that seems to yeah. be in your paintings. Yeah. Uh, You're not conscious of that. I'm not conscious of that influence. But okay. uh, lots of, I, 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 I think I'm not influenced by anybody. But that, that, but then when, when I, I, I sometimes wonder how is it that I can that I just sort of, I don't have to have anything in my head and something comes. You do have things in your head, but it's in the subconscious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. and when I think now, why do I think this works? It's probably recalling something that I saw when I used to go to art galleries and, and look at the old masters all the time. You know, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, but I, I I'm not aware of that. So there, there must be something working in there. It's like a well of subconscious stuff. But can you look at so much painting, even 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 um, even when I was uh, when I had no sophistication at all, and I used to read cowboy books, uh, I, cowboy comics rather, even that kind of because some of the uh, American graphic designers or illustrators, just superb artists, because uh, different culture on the guys was. But the, so there's lots of things that, are, that and you might not want to acknowledge, but they sink they sink down deep in the it. strata of the uh, of your yeah. of your subconscious. You know, it must be, must be. Yes, I, I, I will make this the last question. Um, having been to school in Pontycamma and Van Gary myself, oh, I'm nice. delighted to go to the gallery. Um, what do you hope to bring to the society? Do you have encourage Welsh art or would you yes. like to open up the gallery for um, um, exhibitions that come from away for local people to see? Or? Oh yes, I, I want exhibitions, I, I don't care where they come from, but they, I've got to be in control. It's my yeah. creation, mm -hmm. and one of the reasons why I haven't taken any help from any um, mm -hmm. arts council or anything is that I want to say what, what hangs there. Sometimes often, yeah. what the fuck is <laughs> But um, <laughs> uh, I, I've had I've had other artists already, and I'm going to do after this retrospective comes down in January. I'm going to do uh, a selection of what I regard as good Welsh artists at the moment. Um, and might have had some past. Most artists, uh, but what I'm doing there is fascinating. I don't know myself enough you know, yes. because I tell you that story about how I was standing opposite across the road one day and this mm -hmm. old shop was up for sale. I offered them nothing, I didn't expect them to take it. But, uh, but then, of course, I didn't realize it's cost me a story about it. I won't tell you what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, people think I must be sorry, I'm not rich because I've done this at Studio 18. <laughs> I would be rich if I hadn't. Um, but I, I still don't know. I know it's I, I know it's worthwhile doing, and I'm pleased yes. I I've done it, and I'm happy. And I think as far as the local people, I would like them to come in more freely, and I would like them to get into the idea, not just any making art, but the idea that you can just look at it. You know, you don't have to go in into it as a shop, yes. because that's what's frightening people. Uh, yeah. You just go in and look at it. Now, Leanne Wood was there this afternoon, actually, and she came up with quite a good idea. of an A board. Um, a-frame a thing outside on the pavement. With, it, it doesn't have to be terribly wordy, but it can be. It's going to be punchy. Uh, putting this into people's heads that this this is. Coming in. Well, come in, look at that. So what I would really like to do was my life, my early formative years were were were, were formed by looking at art. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I had a few mentors early on, and I started to look at art quite early, and um, uh, and I realised that the world begins begins. At your doorstep, you know. 
to, and I would think that if um, uh, if you know when people go on holidays abroad, if the, one of the things they do is look at the national collection and go and look at art, that would be fantastic. But apart from that, I, I'd like it to enrich the life of Monty Young. Now I've been a bit mischievous, I know, by doing this gallery in such a place as Oxford Street, Ponty Camera, because yeah. it's I mean as part of my and part of it was to shock, I suppose. And, and yeah, I didn't shock by doing Dreadful's conceptual art. I shocked by putting that, that space in Pony Camera. Mm -hmm. But I still don't know. I go up there. It's luxury. I've got underfloor heating. So there's no radiators on the wall. So all the walls are for hanging painting. Now, the reason why I've got underfloor heating is not because I'm extravagant. It's because we had to, lift, we had to excavate the floor because the planning office insisted that because when the hut, when it was built, the the the, the, the damp coats would have been compressed ash or something like that, and and in order to go any further with what I wanted to do, we had to excavate the floor. So the architect said, "Well, put under the heating while the floor is ex excavated," but but it does seem this extraordinary wealthy extravagant geezer up in point. It's not the case. No, 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 no. <laughs> 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 because and then, and then, and then, because according to finish. You could put on your A-frame, come in for a warm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's warm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. A brief feels free to, to, to mingle and we'll put some tables up. Uh, yeah, we'll swap and move around and get a drink, coffee, tea or whatever. But just to say that we've, uh, Kevin's um, given, given, whatever the yeah. word is, 10 um, prints of... Um, of